years drinking from a well. So thank you all for the space you make here every time you show up. And uh, yeah, this is scary. Mm. <laughs> you got it. You got it. You're amongst friends. A love poem is no place for a novice poet. The experience too common, the metaphors all worn and threadbare. Everyone has been there. What can I possibly tell you that you don't already know? I guess I could tell you how his hair fell across both our faces the first time we kissed. How the hardness of his chin and the softness of his hair felt just right. Just right? Seriously? That's a bit pathetic. So flat and unimaginative. Why are you telling them about his hair? Is that even relevant? And if it is, there surely has to be a more eloquent way to say it. Sorry. <laughs> Let me introduce you to the critic in my head. Because, uh, no wonder I only write a poem every ten years or so. <laughs> She's a cruel dictator with impeccable taste. She keeps my voice locked up in a twisted drawer of false humility and self-hate. Right alongside the poem, poem, the photos I never develop, the songs I don't sing, the books I don't write because none of it is good enough. But maybe I can tell you this. I can tell you he was the first man who ever felt like he belonged inside my body, whose presence was welcome and mystical and not a violation. Mm How -hmm. oh, I swore I could hear the swell of violins and a chorus of voices singing, yes, yes, this is union. I can tell you how he lured me away from my friends into the woods with his sweet voice and his gentle hands, away from my children, into his library, and his words worth volumes into his world, and away from mine. Mm -hmm. How his loneliness became my Everest, a peak mm. so vast I could never spread myself thin enough to mm. cover all the acres and miles that needed me. Um, and only me to pin them to the earth with the weight of my body. Um, but can I tell you? Should I tell you? How that sweet voice could sour in a moment without notice, turning acrid, burning ugly slurs into my skin. He never meant to make me feel I had nothing to offer. A homeless street shuffler begging coins on the corner of my own city. An empty-handed peddler barking goods that no one would want but him. He never meant to make me feel my thoughts were useless. My words, lies, my dreams and ambitions, dry leaves that would crumble before I could ever collect them. And perhaps I can tell you how long after I left him I carried his memory like a piece of glass in my pocket, trying to smooth those broken edges with my own fingers bleeding over and over again as I traced the two sharp edges over and over, trying to be an ocean worth of healing to my own hurt. Mm -hmm. 